Hi, welcome back to this series and a deep dive into my supercar garage number three. As always, if you've not seen the full musical Chill Out Garage Tour, I highly advise you watch that first. So this deep dive will be looking at British and German supercars and we'll be looking at why I chose the model that I chose, the build that I chose, the crew colour and a little bit about each car. Throughout all my garages there are a fair few concept or one-off cars and of course they only have one particular paint scheme and look but I didn't want the same year upon year upon year so this year I have reimagined them but in sympathy with the car that of course they were originally. My thinking is if she has the money at the clout to buy these from the manufacturers and the makers well it's up to her what she does with them. We're kicking off this tour with, of course, one of those cars, the Ubermacht SC1, which is based very closely on the BMW M1 Homage from 2008. This was a one-off model to celebrate the BMW M1 from the early 1970s, which was BMW's mid-engined supercar. I do wish the in-game car looked as good as the real-life car. You can, of course, get close to that homage with the appropriate crew, colour and bright wheels but I say this year being reimagined in this lovely crew blue. I do enjoy driving the car, it sounds nice, it uh, looks good on the road and it handles pretty well, it can stick the back out from times. It's not my favourite in this garage, it's perfectly okay but I think it's really a collector's car. Sticking with the theme of a car that doesn't really look the same as its real life counterpart we have the 9F of course and I've done mine up as an Audi R8 V10 Plus. I picked the V10 Plus just as one of the ultimate editions of this car, I thought why not? Simply using a Torino Red I think it is for the colour and accepting that the further you get back on the car the more different it becomes to the original. The rather plain OG looks of this car are offset by the driving. It's got neutral handling, it will oversteer a little bit, it's a rear biased four wheel drive system and to be honest it's a really excellent drive for the cash. I will just say the noise of the car is a little bit muted. I like it but not as much as the next one. Well, with the years the Audi R8 evolved into a second generation and in the game we have that as well, the Obey 10F. I built mine on the V10 Decenium edition which I think looks absolutely superb. Now I have a full review of this car which I will link down below and if you want to find out more about the Decenium, the build etc I highly advise that you simply watch that video. I really like the car and I know from comments I've received a lot of people do enjoy this particular build on the car. I also like driving it very much. I would describe it as like the 9F but it's more alive in the way that it handles and of course it's a little bit faster. I highly recommend a car from me. Moving on to Mercedes now, we have the AMG1 or the Benefactor Krieger. You probably own one because it's the fastest supercar in the game along with the Emirates. I do have a review out comparing the Emirates and this, so you might like to watch that below. The car is finally out now, so of course you can enjoy watching loads of reviews on YouTube of people actually driving this very expensive and very fast car. In game, I'm afraid the looks of the car are some way behind the original. This is an early car and it in no way looks as good as the real car. So I had a little bit of fun. I made up this crew green to match the one on the photo and I think that really helps to lift the car. I want to do the wheels you see in set but there's nothing like that in game so I simply took these meshed wheels painted in a dark colour to at least try to evoke that style of wheel. I realise it's not that successful but I don't really see what else I could do. Moving on now to another car I absolutely love. There is a full review out on this car as well which I will link below. It's painted in what we call crew black, the pure black but obviously classic black will get you close with a nice red interior. Of course it's the Benefactor SM722 or the SLR McLaren Sterling Moss. I selected black because there's very few colours this car came in and the more classic silver is what I used last year. I love driving this car, no other way to put it. It's quite tail happy, it makes a great noise and of course all the time it's looking so close to the real thing. It's not that high up the supercar table when you actually look at it, um, not a race winner but a lovely lovely collector's car. Like the 9F and the Krieger, here is another car whose looks in game are really quite different from the real life car. The Porsche 918 of course is the fist rate 11 in game. 
very different. Now the link I made to the car whose colour I took no longer works, but I believe I was trying to make this acid yellow and the hex for that is down below. And the hyperfresh wheels are okay, they're not a great match for the car's real wheels, but they are at least evocative of that. Like the previous car, it's some way down the testing tables for Bruffy for lap times. Overall, it drives quite well. It will maybe understeer a little bit and be neutral quite a bit. And then just when you're settled that this car is quite easy, it can snap really quickly. It isn't one of my favourites, to be fully honest with you. Moving on then to one of my real favourites, the McLaren F1, the Progen GP1. I built mine on the LM edition. There were only five of these built to celebrate some race wins in Le Mans. And if you want to find out more about that and about the car in general, again, I do have a full review, which I highly urge you to watch. Painted in papaya orange, for which I have the code down below. Not only do I think this car looks superb, but I love the way that it sounds. I love the way that it drives. I love the way that, although it can't have a central seat in this game, they have managed to match a lot of the interior. They also give you the parts to make either the LM edition or indeed just a standard F1. I know this is one of the cruelly removed cars by Rockstar and is one that will be sorely missed. I really hope you managed to pick one up last week at the car meet or that you have one already. Moving on to another car now which again has not got the closest looks to the real life car but is fantastic fun to drive. The Emirates of course the McLaren Senna is equal top of the tree along with the Krieger. Now the Krieger is the one of the two that I would select to race because it is so much easier and more stable. This is the one that I will select to drive around the streets. It has a very very pointy grippy front end and it doesn't take an awful lot to make the back come out but with a little bit of care it can get around a lap as fast as the Krieger. I say I wouldn't race it but wow is it fun to drive. Again, they made an LM to celebrate some Le Mans victories, but this time in 2020, some 30 years from the car you saw just before. Seven of the 20 were in papaya orange, and I thought what great fun it would be to have both of my cars in that same colour. When I finally had some money in the game, this was one of the first supercars that I bought myself. I've driven it an awful lot, and I absolutely love it. Moving on to a car that, like the current British government, over-promised and under-delivered. The Jaguar XJ220, or the Penetrator in game, was supposed to come with a V12, but it was produced at just the wrong time and in the end it came out with a six cylinder. That said, it was still an extremely fast car. The photo on the top left, the car in silver, that's perhaps how you would expect to see the car, it's how they produced, I think, most of them. But I built it in silver before and I wanted a different colour so I went for the Silverstone Green Metallic as you see on the bottom right. However I thought it would much more suit the wheels from the car on the top left. So what you're seeing is an IRL merge into a GTA car. If you don't like cars that oversteer too much you'll probably really like this one because it's a very neutral car indeed to handle. It's almost as if Rockstar knew that it had a lighter weight engine in the back and thought, hmm, that won't take the back out too much. You could be forgiven for thinking the next car is an imposter in a supercar garage. I mean, why do we have an Aston Martin sports car in here? But the 177 was not a sports car. This is a 750 horsepower front engine rear wheel drive supercar. As the name of the car implies, they only made 77 of these. And for a long time, mine was done up as a Q Division car in a very dark colour. I think it was almost black, but it just somehow looked a bit boring and I wanted something to liven it up a bit. There are not very many bright coloured ones, but number 25 of 77 was sold in a bronze pearl colour, which I think looks really good. So I made up a crew colour to match that. I'm very pleased with how it looks. I don't know how popular this car is. I often think of it slightly more as a collector's car. But in fact, it's a very nice drive. It's a little like the Penetrator that we've just seen in its neutrality, but it can be a little bit more playful, a little bit more movable on the road. And overall, it's a very pleasant car. 
That concludes my run through Supercar Garage 3. It contains quite a few cars that are not close to their real world counterpart in the looks department due to having been produced earlier in the game as you've seen, but it does contain a lot of cars that I really enjoy driving and I couldn't help but close of course with the GP1, the F1. Next week is my last pure supercar garage which contains American cars, French cars and then a few others from all around the world so do tune in next Sunday to watch that one. I hope you got some value or entertainment from this video, I certainly enjoy putting it together for you. If you did, do give me a like please, it would really help me to grow the channel immensely as would a comment. If you like real cars in GTA then please do subscribe, otherwise thank you so much for watching.